The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Uh, we're all familiar with the Playboy Mansion. Uh, Crystal Hefner, she is still the current wife, even though he's passed away. Uh, I think we've got her there up on the screen. A lot of guitars in the background. Crystal Hefner, there's a lot going on there. This is a room's a mess. Sorry. <laughs> is, is that room. your room? Do you play the guitar? Or is that just to impress us that you have some kind of musical talent as well? Oh my gosh, this is a podcast room, and I have a. Uh, a few Playboy guitars, and one's actually from Bruno Mars to Hef, and then I have uh, one was my dad. So I know a few chords, but that's about it for now. We're not going to ask you to take one off the wall and play. <laughs> yes, we? we are. Oh, we are. Are we? <laughs> Um, no, we welcome you to the show. We're very excited that the new book, Only Say Good Things, is available now at all good bookstores. Uh, and also you can head online to download the audiobook, which is great. Um, Crystal, great to have you on the show. Your story is phenomenal. Um, where do we start? Can I ask, wh- wh- where's the Playboy Mansion now? Who owns it? What sort of shape is it in? Oh, my gosh. Um, a guy named Darren Metropolis owns the mansion now. He was a big Playboy fan. Um, and yeah, he bought the mansion when Hef was still alive right. and gave Hef a life tenancy there. And yeah, but he owns it. He's remodeling it. I, I drove by there the other day and there's a lot of construction happening. It's was that been, weird to drive past? Yeah. What does it feel like when you're driving down that road? It does feel very weird. It, it really does. There's a lot of changes and it's a place I spent, you know, almost 10 years of my life. So it, it is very strange. Yeah. Down the info that I've read too, Crystal, says that I think it was one of the parties you were there and that was the first night you met Hef and then sort of things started from there. So from that night onwards, how long do you think over that 10-year period, how long were you into that 10 years where you went, oh, you know what, I don't know if this is this is a great thing? Yeah, kind of early on when he told me I needed to lose weight or that he was having nightmares that I was a brunette because my roots were growing out. Oh, my God. Just, just being, like, physically, like, controlled. And also, this is a time where he was so praised by the media. He was put on such a pedestal and could do no wrong. And people would ask us all the hard questions, like, what's it like sleeping with an old man? And, you know, he, they should have been asking him, what you know, you're 80, you're sleeping with somebody who's 21 and twins that were 19 at the time. Oh, and my God. The, the, the media just praised him so much. So whenever I had feelings of doubt or that something's wrong, I would push him down because, like, everyone sees this person as such a great man. And I, I just convince myself out of it yeah you mu- you must be the one who's wrong yeah, yeah and i guess that can be incredibly isolating you just touched on the me too movement then and you, you said that all of this kind of happened prior to that um in fact hugh died um in in the lead up to to all of that how, how do you think he would have fared these days i mean do you do you think that this cancelled yeah do you think um i mean would the Playboy Mansion still exist? Um, how how does how does it look now? You know, do you think there are places like this that kind of still exist, but not quite under the banner of a Playboy Mansion? Yeah, I think Hef would be if Hef were alive, he'd still be doing the same thing, but just maybe in a more quiet way. Um, I, I don't think the mansion, how it was, could ever exist again. I do feel like it was some weird social experiment in time that will never be repeated. Mm. So I think it's very important for you know stories to come out of that place, and because it is like a part of a part of history now, and have controlled the narrative for so long, and so I think it's really important for other stories to come out. It's part of the reason I wrote the book. Crystal, what, what did a day in the life of you and the and the Playboy Mansion look like? So. I'm just trying to work out, was there people, was there were always people everywhere or were there regular servants that worked there or butlers or however it worked and then everyone came together for dinner or what was the setup? Yeah, there were about 70 staff members. There oh were my God. chefs and yeah, butlers and chefs and security and there was, there was a zoo department, there was a scrapbook department that helped have document everything. What? Um, there was a video department. It was crazy. I mean, this is a place that had a license for a zoo. They had a license to shoot off fireworks in the backyard. Wow. It was just completely over the top. And you could order anything you wanted at any time and someone would cook it for you. And yeah, he just, it was this complete lavish lifestyle. But 
you know, I came from humble, a humble background, so I always knew it was temporary and I never got used to it. And the staff were my friends and they felt the most normal to me. So um, I did appreciate them a lot. Because there was that story too, sorry, Kate, yeah. where was it Jack Nicholas who had the tunnel that ran under, under the ground? <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, there was a tunnel underground that went from his property to the Playboy Mansion so he could just pop up whenever he wanted. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So there were no, there were no tunnels. No tunnels. Like there, were, there was like a basement, but there were no tunnels. There was no Elvis room. I heard about that. Oh, the Elvis no Elvis room. But they did call it Jack Nicholson's drive through because he would call and order something from the kitchen and then just drive in, pick it up and leave. You're kidding me. Oh, seriously yeah. from the kitchen. That's not code for anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh my goodness. You would have seen some incredibly oh, yeah. famous faces there. Is there anyone in particular that you were. Couldn't get rid of. St- well, couldn't get rid of. <laughs> uh, starstruck by, you know, like, oh my goodness. And even they're there. No, I think the different caliber or, and like different types of celebrities that were there were so interesting. Like you would have like the original Catwoman and she'd be sitting next to like Lionel Richie and who'd be sitting next to like Buzz Aldrin, who was like wow. the second man on the moon. And it's just just such a, so many different people all in one place. It, it was very interesting. Because I know it was kind of for that Halloween party that would happen every year. I know there was a lot of AFL footballers that managed to get an invite. How did you get an invite to that party? Who was I think if you were a celebrity, if you were a celebrity, you got right in because Hef loves celebrities and wanted them all there, you know, especially international. Like for him, that's so cool. Um, But if you're a a woman wanting to go to a party, you have to go through this grueling process of submitting your photos and getting them rated and all of this stuff. So it was it was much easier for a celebrity than a than a girl wanting to come. Oh, my God. It's just madness. Well, it's an amazing story. Thank you, Crystal Heffner. The new book is uh, Only Say Good Things. It's available now at all good bookstores. Head online, download the audio book too. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for sharing your story. Fascinating. Fits in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.